This is Diana Mahoney with the Global Medical News Network reporting from the European Congress of Rheumatology in Copenhagen, Denmark. I'm speaking with Dr. Edward Vital of the University of Leeds in the United Kingdom, who presented the results of a study showing that patients with rheumatoid arthritis who do not respond to initial treatment with rituximab can be successfully retreated with a second course of rituximab after six months. Dr. Vital, in the data you presented, Nearly three-quarters of the rheumatoid arthritis patients who did not respond to initial rituximab therapy achieved improved disease activity scores and ULR responses when retreated after six months. H how do you explain this? So we've been looking at mechanistic studies on non-response to rituximab for some years, and um, when rituximab was first used, it seemed that all patients were depleting B cells completely, but some of these patients were still not responding, which is almost paradoxical. Uh, however, the, 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 the flow cytometry used to measure B cells in those studies was really insensitive and was unable to measure the differences in B cells between patients um, after rituximab. We've been working with a technique called highly sensitive flow cytometry that can measure much smaller numbers of B cells. And what we've seen is that um, B cell depletion is almost always incomplete in patients that fail to respond to rituximab. So our, the hypothesis of our study was that if patients who fail to respond to rituximab, it's because they haven't been completely depleted, then if we gave more rituximab, uh, which was at six months, so before B cells have fu fully returned to a normal baseline level, then you'd get greater depletion and this would result in greater clinical responses. Mm -hmm. Can you um, describe the quality of the responses? And th uh, with the retreatment? So there, there, there is a variation in the quality of the responses, um, but in some cases those responses were, were very impressive with patients going from severely active disease into complete remission. The other interesting thing about the quality of the responses is um, with, with rituximab, it's not just how well patients respond straight after treatment, but also how long that lasts for. We found that the median time to retreating after that second cycle that had been effective was actually no different from the patients who were having their first cycle of rituximab and responding as normal. Okay. Now, uh, would you, I guess, routinely retreat these patients or would you try to determine the level of B cell depletion or would that just be, you know, in individual patient in, patients? Yeah, in non-responders or, mm -hmm. non or overall? Yeah. So in non-responders, actually what, what we saw is that by all of these patients straight after the rituximab had some B cells remaining. Mm -hmm. Six months at the time when we gave gave the second course of rituximab, they almost all have um, B cells present. So 95% mm -hmm. of patients have some B cells present. So for, say, a clinician that didn't have access to this kind of test, you could actually fairly safely assume that there would be B cells present at six months if you were contemplating using another cycle. Mm -hmm. The other important point is, of course, that we've We've also done some work looking at B cells in the synovium. And we know that even when there are none in blood by any technique, there still are B cells in other tissues. Um, so it, it, it may well be that in further rituximab is still beneficial even, even in those patients. This is Diana Mahoney with the Global Medical News Network.